Rooster Teeth is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Keep your private information private by using ExpressVPN. You can find out more information at expressvpn.com slash rooster. Thanks, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring Rooster Teeth. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. I am Gus. Gavin. Drew. Barbara. And the moon. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and Gus. <laughs> <laughs> and Gus. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Receipt Podcast. Um, and I, I see we, I want to tell everyone uh, if you're a member of Receipt First, we uh, live stream and you can uh, communicate with us in chat. And uh, we got an eye on chat right now. Or if you just come over to Receipt.com, uh, Mondays when we stream this. And so we we'll keep an eye on them. Lots of people ready for Moon Talk. What's up, Gab? We start on time every week to the, every to week. the second on the dot. We actually usually are pretty Austin. good about being on time. Like, every, we're rarely every time I've, Every time I've been on, y'all have been hyper punctual. Like, ha- yeah. is, it's very rare to be late, even by a minute for y'all. So today I will was... say today was entirely my fault. Uh, <laughs> so apologies if you're watching live. That was it my happens. bad. It happens. It happens. Long meeting. I, uh, you, you know, it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about this quite a bit, but it, uh, it had, uh, there was a freak event yesterday in austin it snowed and it never snowed here <laughs> and it was the, it was the end of the world i've been living in austin now for 23 years and i was the asshole all week long we were like it might snow on sunday i was the asshole going it's not gonna snow it won't stick <laughs> it'll just be rain and then on sunday i was sitting in my house with no power under a blanket shivering going, <laughs> mother <laughs> fucking snow you lost power oh no oh god <laughs> it was so shitty <laughs> It was oh, like uh, it was severe. There was thunder. I've never I've never experienced like a I heard, real I heard storm, one like thunder. thunder snow. Yeah, this yeah, it was metal weather. Explosion. Yeah. Thunder snow. But it's weird yeah. to have thunder not be able to echo around. It was like, <laughs> but yeah. it's all dampened by the snow. It was like, sounds weird. It, it, it sounded weird at first. I thought like I heard the initial rumblings of the thunder, and I thought. Is that wind? And I like went to my window to look out, and then it, like it just got gradually increased, and it became thunder. I was like, it's thundering during snow. It's like <laughs> it sounded so bizarre. I definitely didn't expect it to snow to that extent. Like when I saw that the forecast had snow, I was like, oh, I've seen Austin snow before. It's the little flurries. It like melts pretty much on contact, if not like a little sprinkling of like that <laughs> dusting on the grass that you might get. But it right. like was getting fucking thick. Like yeah, I was yeah. it. I was looking at my lawn turn white, and even at that point, I was like, it's not going to take. There's no way. And then it <laughs> just like, stacked up, and I was like, this is real. This is actual snow. Yeah. It, it I was had, uh, very cool. I had my uh, internet. I have, like, my Wi-Fi and my uh, internet modem, like, hooked up to a battery backup system. And I was like, when the power first went out, I was like, no, eh, it'll be fine. I've got my internet. I'll be able to use my laptop. They're like, after two hours, <laughs> the, the, the battery died <laughs> oh, no. and my internet went down. I was like, oh, shit. Now I got to find something else to do. <laughs> God. So, what, was your, what was your go-to uh, power outage move? Like, what did you wind up doing? Well, napping, by then, napping or reading? By, th- by then, the sun started going down, so I had to start finding candles. <laughs> Oh my god. When did it get back just on? Did it come back? Real survivor man over there, dude. Yeah, it, it came back. Uh, it, it wasn't it, it wasn't too long after dark. So it was like I barely had to like by the time all the candles were set up, it was already uh, back on. I like how right before the podcast, we were talking about the snow and Eric, who's in this call with us, was saying that he's never lived. I'm getting a call on Discord. That was weird. Um, he's never lived in a city that had snow. And so he didn't know how to react. And he thought his roof might cave in because of the weight of the snow. <laughs> Don't uh. make fun of me. I'm from Southern California. <laughs> it doesn't snow on me. There's just fires. I know what to mm. do if there's a fire. Sure. But sure. I don't know. I got scared that my car was going to get hurt. I didn't know what hurt. to do. I fell on the ground. It you was, fell? It was, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was walking. <laughs> And did you know that concrete is slippery when icy? Anyway, oh, yep. mm-hmm. I'm not a big snow guy. Why did you go out into the world without doing research? Because I wanted to see I, it. it. Because was all the non-snow people and I were went, so what excited. Is this? It was interesting because so, I, I went on a little snow walk because, you know, it's fun. It sounds really cool. That All the sounds deadened. And I, I realized that I, I walked down the street and I was like, the last time I was walking down the street, I was sweating my tits off in like 38 degree <laughs> weather. And that was like 
a few months ago. It's so yeah. weird to have such extreme climate differences in the same place. No, I mean, wasn't so, it like 75 last week? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was nice. It was great, yeah. P P people are pointing out that it looks like I'm in a fuck room. Uh, when the power <laughs> went out, the lights, my lighting behind me got reset, so I haven't been able to find the appropriate color again, so I'm going to adjust it right now. <laughs> no, leave it. Gus's, I like the no, fuck room. It. Everybody loves Gus's fuck was, room. Think, Who doesn't love Gus's little... fuck room? Uh, I'll show you. It was, it was a little more orange before, and I think it just, it was, it's a little intense oh, now. Oh, okay. God. Get, get Am I doing it right? Moody. Oh. oh, that's awful. Gavin looks like he's in hell. <laughs> just... There we go. <laughs> Thank you, chat, for alerting me to my fuck room status. It's uh, it's fixed. I think it's a little more. No, that's too yellow. That's not what it was like. God damn it. Yeah. I mean, it looks good though. I I need some lights for behind me. I feel like everything's just coming from the front on my my end. I have no like backlighting, which makes you guys look really nice. Mm. You had that uh that little uh pink cloud for a while. That was chill as fuck. Yeah, but then I I like essentially redecorated my entire mm. office space to be consistent with like a mature looking thing instead uh, of like these mm -hmm. neon Amazon lights that I had taped to my wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get you a little it's LED gonna... underlight. You yeah. Spell out your name and shit. I think I'd like to live in a snowy climate one day. Spend oh, yeah? spend oh absolutely not. Snow. Wait, mm -mm. Why not? did you not? Uh, did you did it not snow where you came from in England? Uh, not like that, it, probably. No, like sometimes it would snow, you know, like a foot of snow, but it was just very rare. It would happen, mm. I think growing up on average, like one day a year, you would get everything's going to stop because of the snow. But you're, you're saying you want to live somewhere that's like a Montana mm. or like a yeah. far up north where you're like... Just to try it. Just to try it out. Feet of snow. I, yuck. <laughs> no. As someone yeah. who uh, lived in a snowy climate for 22 years, I would not recommend. I think it's a nice thing to like take a vacation in maybe like even an extended vacation like if you take a month off and like go do your thing in a snowy place but to live that day in and day out for half the year if not more is a little tiresome but it might be nice to do it once right like just go and then spend like one winter there and then never again yeah. the most uh the most amount of heart related deaths fatalities are caused by shoveling snow why is that uh, i've heard that it's because uh, uh, your blood vessels constrict, I think. They constrict, and then you're doing a bunch of physical labor, and then you blow is it an artery. because you're not, not used to it, though? Like, surely people who live in a snowy climate don't... Right, so, like, more unfit, more unfit people get out there during the snow months to get their car out of the snow so they can go sit at their office, and they're not used to working, you know, doing any manual labor, and then they get cold, and they're... So people people should shovel snow year-round to all train the time. and prepare right. for it. Yeah, yeah, shovel anything. Just do some exercise before you just start shoveling snow so your heart's ready for it, so you don't die in your driveway yeah like if gavin i know you don't drive but if you like live in a snowy climate and have to go anywhere you have to account for extra time of scraping the ice and snow off your car and then letting your car heat up oh, before yeah, I, you I definitely could... did that like before school we'd have like we'd get frost to the point where the windscreen would you wouldn't be able to see through it you'd have to like dump water on it and scrape but, it off and stuff but when uh it wasn't like real... what would you say don't have water on it yeah, that's well, bad. Definitely, some some people think that they should uh, pour boiling water on on iced over windshield and stuff, but you definitely should it, not it do that. It freezes <laughs> immediately. <laughs> the but it's the what, first it's time what my I ever saw, always did. The first time I ever saw that, I uh, it's when I was a lot younger at my old job. I flew up in winter. I flew up like in December from Austin to Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, I got out of the airport and I went to pick up my rental car. And when I got in the rental car, there was uh, an ice scraper and a brush, like I guess to like, you know, clean your car off if it snows, but it wasn't snowing at the time. And I looked at that, it was on the driver's seat. I was like, those idiots, they left a brush in my car. And I like <laughs> threw it in the back seat. <laughs> a then, like, brush the, in my yeah, car. The next morning I woke up and like my car was covered in ice and snow. I was like, oh, that's what that was for. <laughs> like, they, I'm Duh. the idiot, not them. <laughs> idiots, let their stupid brush in here. What is this, a horse brush? <laughs> Does kind of look like a horse brush now that I think about it. Yeah, it was yeah, uh, it, it, it was it was something else. I, I don't I can't remember the last time I saw that much uh that much snow here. And of course the Austin subreddit became unusable all day yesterday because it was so did just Twitter pictures of snow. <laughs> so, my entire Twitter feed because I obviously I follow everyone like people at Rooster Teeth and people who live in Austin and people we know through like the this uh industry, I guess, a lot of people who live in Austin and like Every single person was tweeting about the snow in some form or fashion, 
whether it was an actual like legit i'm out in the snow or man obli- obligatory snow tweet lol like yes <laughs> it's snowing mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. it's very about this very snow. pure though yeah yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh shit on other people's fun but it was just it was uh, it was there was a lot of snow pictures, a lot of pictures of snowmen uh, posted on social media yesterday. I mean, I get it. You live in a place where that's not something that you're usually exposed to, so I understand why people would be excited about it. I mean, those and little I, shitty not. snowmen brought me did bring me a lot of joy. Like everybody's <laughs> had the tiniest, shittiest snowman. Like none of them were more than like eighteen inches, and everybody was so pleased with themselves. Yep. I don't know whether it's because the ground was wet and boggy from winter, but. These were some muddy snow. Oh, yeah. It was like a really dirty. Like... Well, it's because the snow didn't collect. All the right. snow was close to the ground in the mud. Yeah. So it invariably got scooped up yeah. in there. Yeah, it was also like just above freezing, which made the snow like super uh, wet and compactable. So it was probably yeah. Yeah, soaking in all that mud right the away. Worst, the worst snow for a snowball fight. Like taking one of those to the eyeball, one of those snowballs from yesterday, <laughs> forget it. The worst, but also the best, because if you're just above freezing, you could actually pack snow in. When it's too cold, snow is too fluffy, so you can't right. actually get a firm like ball form. But like those like balls, a... that's those are the ones you get told on. That's the ones where you go somebody <laughs> get, get, tells your mom, and then you're in trouble. Like, yeah. One time, one time when I was a little kid, God, this is a this is a bad story. I can't believe I'm telling this. One time when I was a little kid, uh, my sister and I did not get along very well. And uh, it was one of those rare moments where it did snow. Like I said, I grew up on the border. So it's like snow over there is even more rare than here. And it, we got a little bit of snow. And how old were we? I must have been like 11 or 12. So my sister was, you know, a couple years younger than me. And uh, we went out into the front yard. And I don't know why. I think she was annoying me. So uh, I just grabbed a whole bunch of snow in my hand. And then I opened up the back of her jacket and just threw in a bunch of snow <laughs> into her back. Oh, my God. <laughs> And uh, so she started screaming and then she ran inside. So that way I could, I was happy because I could play by myself outside in the snow without her annoying me. <laughs> like she, she was done for the day after that. It was like, that was it. Game over for her. She, didn't, she did not come back out. I felt so bad. I saw this, uh, there's this girl I follow on social media. She's like an influencer. Um, and she was doing this cute video where she was like, she had her phone up on a ledge and she was like playing in the snow, making a snowball. And then wanted to do this thing where she like threw the snowball at her phone and it would like hit the lens and then you would cut the video kind of thing. But I guess she had made a snowball and there was like a rock inside the (gasps) snow that she had picked up. Oh no. And so it went and like knocked her phone and all you see is her going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, shit, shit, shit. Like (laughs) picking up her phone (laughs) thinking it's all cracked. (laughs) Gotta be careful. Oh, that's great. Uh, I didn't throw any. I didn't. I didn't get engage in any snowball fights. I did see a rather. I did see a pretty big snowman in my neighborhood, though. Someone obviously gathered all of the snow they could and uh, stealing and built some one. neighbor's snow. Yeah, it it's was like, probably still there, but a little bit maybe, sad maybe. looking. Yeah, maybe it's all. It's pretty much all gone this morning, mm-hmm. minus all, like some sprinkling on roofs here and there. Uh, also, Gus, I know you're dying to talk about it, so I'll bring it up for you. I like your new earphones. Oh, oh. My my new headphones. They showed up two months early. <laughs> they, <laughs> they showed up oh. right right before we started the podcast. I, let's I wasn't have a sure look if at I was them. Get, what are they? Yeah, or... let's take a gander. Ooh. Ooh. The AirPod Max, little three sixty. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, let's see the back. Very nice. See, I no like cord. the top. I can, I can do that now. The way it like sits on your head, it's nice. Yeah, that looks How like it's comfortable. How do they feel and sound? They're pretty comfortable. I mean, my old ones are still right here in case these didn't work out. Uh, I like these; just they're a little less obtrusive. I felt like the I love the I love these headphones, but I felt like the band was a little too big on them. This actually sits a little better, a little more flush in my head. Hmm. Uh, but the downside is that they are Bluetooth and wireless, so they have a battery. So that's what I'm always afraid of: battery-powered headphones that they're going to die when I need them. But it's also uh, nice to not have a cord, like especially if. I don't know, you're in a meeting or something and you need to get up to go do something. It, you could just like walk away and still listen. It's it's funny you say that because I keep, I don't know if you notice, I keep doing this every now and then. Like I'll reach over my shoulder to like move the cord because uh, the, the old cord used to sit here and I would move it sometimes behind me. And it's like, oh, the cord's gone. I don't need to do that anymore. So can you charge them while you're wearing them? Or is it like the Apple mouse um, where you so. have to plug it in underneath and the why, mouse doesn't function? Why would oh you put God, the this... plug there? I still don't understand <laughs> yeah. who like came into the office one day and was like, plug go there. I'm like, no! It's why the would dumbest you... shit. 
it's out so of bad. All the Apple designed things, I think the mouse with the the way it charges is the worst. I think. Nah, yeah. Apple Apple TV remote is the worst. Why? Oh, yeah, why is this? Just... <laughs> oh, well, how does the uh, how does the Apple TV remote charge? What is that? Uh, it's not it's not to do with the charging of that. It's just garbage. Um, the remote it's itself. Not, it's oh, the, the sensitivity of it, and like the yeah. 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 And like over time, it gets extra shitty. And also, if you put it down on your couch and look away for like five to six seconds, it's it gone. would have slipped away and gone, gone between the cushions. <laughs> it disappears. Not recommended. The, yeah. The the the. I'm gonna talk about my headphones again for just a second. The other downside is since they're Bluetooth, my mixer does not have any Bluetooth <clears throat> connectivity. Oh. So I had to buy a little Bluetooth adapter. I can't. The you can barely see it right there. And plug it into my mixer, and then my headphones connect to this Bluetooth adapter. I'll uh, be honest, it sounds like you've taken a step down in convenience, and why not just use your old ones? The the cord, right here. And plus these have like a transparency mode, you can hit a button and you can hear, like, without having to take the headphones off. Oh, so that's like, handy. Yeah, if yeah. someone's calling, if someone's at, you know, coming into the room here, uh, I can hit a button. Someone. If my wife comes into the room, who else to come in? I can... <laughs> I can uh, I can uh, I can hear. Well, something I that like something that I don't ahead. like. Sorry, Gavin. Something that I don't like about um, wearing those over-the-ear headphones when we're recording is I don't have the ability to hear myself through my microphone the way I have my setup. So it feels muffled. So I ne always need to like take mm. one earphone mm. off of an ear. So you know, if I had something like that, I'd be able to hear myself talk a bit better with that transparency setting. Like I'm, I'm testing it. Oh yeah, it sounds. Weird. Oh, I don't like that at all. Never mind. I'm not turning that off. <laughs> not for everyone. Bluetooth, Bluetooth kind of sucks for everybody, right? Like, I'm not the only one who's just using Bluetooth and it never works the way it's intended to work. Everybody has that problem, or am well, I the only one? I feel like when you're try whenever I'm trying to set up a new Bluetooth device, it takes forever. It doesn't work, but then but eventually then it does work. All the like shit Bluetooth. that I set up, like, will randomly once every three months just be like, no, I'm unpaired. I forgot that. Like, I have it in my truck, and every like four months. I get in the truck and it's like, we don't understand how Bluetooth works anymore. And it's like, why is it not I've always one and done? dealt with over-enthusiastic Bluetooth. Like I was talking about how I have <laughs> headphones that are just paired to something that I don't know what it is and I don't know where mm -hmm. it is, but it's still paired. But I, yeah. I, I like the headphones I've got. They have like a little base station. So my mixer plugs into that. And then it's wireless and the battery is just swapped. Oh. So you, you only ever have to be down for like... Five seconds while you swap the battery in those two batteries. <laughs> I also just looked over at the call to see Gavin. And can we just get a close-up on Gavin real fast? What's what's that piece of hair doing on uh, your right side? Oh this yeah, side? it does look like a wire. Yeah, that's it's side. going like it's going like oh. over your headphones. I thought that was a wire. I thought that was a I thought that was a wire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, it's out of control. I like it's out of it. control. <laughs> it was a uh, oh. very entertaining to me just watching that the, fling about. The, real fast, there's one other thing I want to bitch about here. Go on. Oh. What is that? This is the what case. Is that? For, this is the case for the what? headphones. <laughs> can, can you open it? Let's see it. How does it? Oh, it looks the... like a bra. It yeah. does look like a bra. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I thought it was supposed to be like just a regular. Um, like big old pouch, although I guess that would have taken up a lot of room. It's so strange. Anyway, all right, that's it. I'm, I'm done talking about this stupid thing. <laughs> that you enjoy. <laughs> that I enjoy. That I, that I that I got pretty much for free because I had a gift card. Um, Fair play. Yeah. Well, why not? This episode of Received Podcast is brought to you by MeUndies. So let's talk about love. Yep, we're doing it. If there's one thing that got us through this past year, other than that video of dog face vibe into Fleetwood Mac. Uh, and that means getting extra cheesy for Valentine's Day is okay. Uh, despite everything, we found new ways to match our daily lives together with the ones that we love most. That's why MeUndies released their Valentine's Day collection in undies, loungewear, and more. So you and your Valentine can match through it all. Show that special someone how much you care and say those three words everyone wants to hear. Match my MeUndies. Uh, and if you're single, no problem. Show yourself some love in something that makes you feel amazing because... You deserve that. Uh, you know, I love MeUndies. I'm wearing some right now. Uh, not the Valentine's Day ones. I'm wearing Panda ones. Uh, I've talked about them forever because they're really the best uh, while still having the coolest prints and styles around. I think if you give them a try, you'd agree with me. There's no going back to any other underwear easily. 
Uh, Mandy's are made with sustainable, breathable, softer than soft fabric and available in a range of sizes from extra small to 4XL. Mandy's membership gives you and your boo a new pair of undies or socks every month. Members get discounted pricing on everything Mandy's makes as well as early access to major print launches. Mandy's has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. Mandy's also has their problem-free philosophy. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, they'll refund or exchange it. No caveats, no questions. To get your 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to meandies.com slash roosterteeth. That's meandies.com slash roosterteeth. Uh, oh, so, so I know there's something you want to talk about, Barbara. So I'm going to oh. set you up for it. Uh, last time uh, Drew was on a couple of weeks ago, you said that uh, you were going to do some uh, some serious research into our background and uh, <laughs> tell us what the stars had in store for us. <laughs> yeah, oh so there are scopes. There actually might not be a lot of people who are aware because I think it was the post show that we talked about it. Oh, was it? On. Oh. It might have been the post show. So, yeah, last time Drew was on, we started getting off on <laughs> getting off on astrology, going off on astrology, <laughs> uh, and how I've been like just like watching TikToks about it and like just reading about it. And it's just fascinating. I don't necessarily believe in that kind of stuff, or I'm not putting a lot of like effort and energy into it, but I just find it fascinating. And then. Uh, drew gavin and gus were like oh like let's let's have you do or maybe i suggested it i don't remember but essentially i asked them for their birth dates their birth times and the birth cities to find more detailed information about these fellows and I'm, also, i wanted to also see my, also my mother maidens my mother's maiden name for some reason <laughs> and, and your first car <laughs> yeah i don't wanna, I feel like there was a little more to it than that barbara <laughs> So I understand that this isn't like very interesting to some people, but some people might find it fascinating, like I do. So um, I, I don't, have. I don't typically. I don't typically consider myself like a big astrology person, but why not? Right? I mean, if someone's passionate about it, like I want to hear. I also so I put in all this information and I got your sun sign and your moon sign, um, or like where you were um, when you were born, and. I, I was going to go deeper into it, but it was like going to be essentially too much information and too long to get into on a podcast and probably would have gotten boring at one point. So I could send we you just, guys the more information after, but. Sure. We can start a separate podcast where we just <laughs> yeah. do that. Astrology with Barbara. Barbara tells the future. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so fast, I could, on, on, on a technical note, I feel like I'm hearing some static on your microphone now, Barbara. Like, Mine? like there's a noise, there's a noise floor or something, like a electrical interference. Beep, beep, beep. It's only, yeah, it's definitely you. It's whenever you talk. I guess that's when the microphone activates. Just in case there's an easy fix, I don't know what's what's going on over there. Do you want me to try to leave the call and join the call again? Uh, I don't know. Why is too tight? <laughs> I'll My leave it to wives. Shane or Eric. I don't know. I don't know if it's just me or if anybody else hears it. I'm, not, or, hearing, I'll, I'll, I'm, not, hearing I'm not hearing any static. It you must know? be oh, those okay. new Space Age headphones. Oh, yeah, maybe uh -oh. These damn headphones. I hadn't considered you... that his headphones were bad. Oh. Right, well, <gasps> did you turn on noise floor, Gus? That's a feature. It's, it's only when Barbara talks. Though. I don't know. That's weird. Okay, weird. sorry. I don't want to don't want to derail. So we could go about this a number of ways. I I could just pick a person and start with them, or I could like read about it and someone could guess if. It's them. They're more detailed, so we might just want to like be straight up of like this is this person's stuff. I'm a, big, I'm, I'm a big guessing fan, but do it do it do what your heart says. Let's guess for Drew. All right, let's guess. Let's, let's guess. guess. Okay. I'm a big guessing fan. <laughs> um, guess. Okay. So I'll start with this person. I have to avoid some things because it does give away like what the signs are, and I'll, mm, I'll just mm, mm. talk around them. All right. So this person, person number one, sensitive to both both criticism and others' feelings. Uh, they believe in people. They're often hurt by compassionless human behavior. They have a tendency to avoid harsh realities, but when reality does hit, they retreat into their own self-pitying world. However, <laughs> they gain energy and self uh, from self-pity, and they come back stronger to face the world again. Uh, some people believe that they find pleasure in suffering. <laughs> Wow. Um, so uh, for this person, in order to feel good about yourself, they need to be busy with daily activities to produce work they could be proud of. Uh, positive feedback for the services they render is important to them, but be careful not to over identify with the appreciation appreciation you receive from others as your work and your health suffers when you feel underappreciated. Motivation to do a good job should come from within. Um, this person invests a lot of pride in their intellectual capacities. 
Uh, <laughs> they may not always <laughs> listen as well as they speak. However, uh, they might be too busy thinking about what to say next. Uh, this person is very curious, and although they enjoy expressing themselves, they usually don't dominate conversations completely. Um, as far as studying or learning goes, they are better off reading the material than listening to a teacher. These traits come from a strong need to take an active role in communication. It is very hard for them to passively listen and absorb information. Uh, let's see what else. Oof. Okay. And then, okay, so that's lot. that's the sun getting... stuff. A lot oh, of guesses. The sun in chat. one. All right. So, um, yeah, this this is about their sun sign. Okay. So th uh, this is the same person, and this is talking about their moon sign. Uh, they find security in little things in life. They feel most con uh, content when they've straightened out all the details of everyday life. Many of them enjoy running errands, paying bills, and balancing the books. They take care of these things happily, although some won't uh, let on about it. In fact, many of them are quite practiced at nagging and complaining. As long as they are appreciated, however, these people will help you take care of your life too. They are at their best when they usually feel useful and needed, uh, if someone needs help, they are generally the first to jump in and take on the task. Almost done. These people express their affection for the people they care about in little but practical ways. They can be a little stiff when it comes to open, gushy displays of affection, and they are often shy with new people. Um, this person also has good memory, scientific or medical studies preferred above all others. Uh, they are humble and moderate, calm and reserved, and are willing to help and are devoted and gentle. So that's that person. Woof. <laughs> is that that's, that's none a, of us yeah. <laughs> there's, there's like bits and pieces to unpack right it's like right. how much of it do you want to take like there's like if i take some parts i could apply it to one person or i take other parts i could apply it to another person so right. i'm trying to think like holistically like an average of everything that you said who mm -hmm. would that apply to Bar barb are you also included on this or is it just no us boys just this us is boys. just drew gavin or gus okay hmm. unfortunately eric is not mm. included i'm sorry eric i'll get you next mm. time <laughs> okay and do we want to hear all of them first and then guess on the ones or do we want to try to guess as we go I, might I, as well I feel, what do you well i feel like it's a lot to remember i'm sure. almost thinking guess as we go yeah okay guess as we okay. go sounds great but we can okay. we, 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 yeah i don't know let's do that i mean because then like the last person will know it's them but we could read well, it well, why way. don't we hear the last one and then we'll do a recap so we remember, or is that too much? Is that too much time? <laughs> <laughs> Twenty minutes of this podcast for us just trying to figure out the rules of guess that astrology. Because well, so there's no one here. Rules. Is there anyone here that feels like, oh, that's definitely me, or I, I think like I have a lot of those tendencies? I was gonna say most of them. I was gonna go for me, but I also went me the last time first, and I was wrong. So yeah, I was, I was thinking some of it's me, but I was thinking also maybe Drew. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go Drew as well. Most of the sun sign stuff, I was like, that's me. And then the moon sign, I was like, I think it's Gus. So but... what's funny? It's funny is the sun sign. I was like, that's not me. And then the moon sign, I was like, that might be me. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people say the moon sign is often more accurate to the person's was that the trait. Second one. Yeah, it's yeah. the second one. That's the second part of what I read. Gus. Hmm. So do you want me to get to to say or just keep going? I guess say? Yeah. yeah. All right. So I, that was Gus. I want you to say. I that want you to say who the person is. <laughs> oh. Gus Darola. Yes. Ah. So you are a, a Gemini sun, Leo moon. Oh, Gus is a Gemini. Are. Oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, Pisces sun, Virgo oh, okay. moon. Oh. I was reading a different one. Wait, so did you read me. the wrong one or just look no, at the wrong one then? I just okay. I pulled up the next tab for the next one. Oh, got it. But I'll I'll swap these around so we don't know necessarily who's next. I liked the bit about how the self pity makes him stronger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the part I was like, I don't I don't like that. I don't, <laughs> you go I don't pity yourself, and then, and then that makes you better. Uh, if anything, like maybe not self pity, but like being bullied as a kid made me stronger. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> wallowing yeah. in that <laughs> yeah all right uh let's see who to do next let's do this person next all right <clears throat> let me get on my main screen here all right one of the standout standout characteristics of those born under this sun sign 
is their unwillingness to follow the beaten track. With advancement and progress on their minds, there can be an irreverence to old and outdated ways of thinking and doing things. Many of them aim to free themselves of personal and social conditioning. Although open to change in theory, they could be surprisingly stubborn. Their idealism runs strong, but they could be very fixed in on their opinions. They're often a bit aloof and even standoffish. Um, nonetheless, they're usually well liked. They are uh, curious and observant and tolerant in a broad sense. They value progress and frankness. It's difficult to throw them for a loop. They're generally on top of things. Uh, they need space and value personal freedom. Any attempt to box them in will likely fail. They'll happily return the favor and they will treat people from all walks of life as equals. Equity and fairness are hallmarks of this sign. If you're quirky and different, all the better. So that's for the sun sign. This is 200% for... Gavin. There's no way that that's not Gavin. I, but, I, okay, feel like, the... I feel like I could agree with myself with everything you just said. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, thousand <laughs> Gavin. That, that means it's probably you, Drew. Yeah, that's, exact, that's, how, that's how this all works. Okay, what's right, the moon? So, what's the moon? So for the moon, familiarity is important. They feel with their senses, they are pretty much rooted in their ways. They revel in material comforts. In fact, building a solid and comfortable home and foundation helps to keep them feel safe and content. It isn't wise to try to push these people into doing anything, but once they have made a commitment, they're persevering. There's a steadiness to this position of the moon and that is comforting to those close to them. They tend to go out of their way to avoid a messy or unpredictable situation, crisis or emotional display. Instead, they focus on creating a reliable and secure life around them. Their affections are strong, deep, and unwavering. They are sentimental and warm. They are very much tied to the physical world, and they often have a particularly well-developed sense of smell. <laughs> um, <laughs> relationships, <laughs> and that doesn't mean it's necessarily Gavin. I know. <laughs> relationships with people born with this position of the moon are often quite enduring. Many people in this moon sign hang on to their mates, even in the face of serious conflict. Uh, they are a fixed sign, so breakups don't happen easily. There is a serenity to them that is calming. In fact, it takes a lot to get the, uh, to really get them. However, they do get off center every once in a while. They are not the most adaptable people when their own routine is interrupted. For example, they are uncomfortable with surprises. This is Gavin. Like, I, I feel like the I, end kind of cemented it for me as well. I feel like I want it to be me because there wasn't. It was an accurate description of how I know who you are. Like that's like if you were to just if somebody was like I'm describing someone without actually saying the name, like it's Gavin. That's but I'm I'm gonna guess it's probably me. Well, do you but want I, me to read the other one and then you guys could decide? Between oh, the two. okay. I I feel like there's no way. I don't know. I feel like I want it to be me. I don't think it's me. It's, <laughs> it definitely right. didn't feel like <laughs> me. <laughs> then this would you, you, be real. You didn't have you didn't have the bad one like me, like powered by self pity. Powered by self pity. <laughs> I like how that's the only thing you took away. Not like them be like caring about people. I said it was the fine. shittiest heard, thing to say. I heard that, that one and I was like, I hope it. that's not me. And it was Yes. Powered by self pity. <laughs> just you hate you you just wake up every day out of spite to yourself. Just And you love it. And you love it. <laughs> All right. I'll I'll read this last one and then you guys could decide between the two. All right, okay. here's the last person, person number three. The urge for self-expression is strong. They are often just as interested in collecting information as they are in sharing it. Curious to a fault, they have a finger in every pie. They are flexible and changeable people. Their ability to adapt quickly to new situations generally gains them plenty of friends and social contacts. Usually quite clever and witty, they enjoy intellectual conversations as they are easily bored if they're not getting enough mental stimulation. <laughs> often, often quite adept uh, in fi at fitting in with others, they easily adopt the moods of those around them. They are friends to people from all walks of life and are not easily intimidated. Their ability to detach themselves can make them very objective and observant, but a little difficult to get close to. Although they often have many friends, intimacy doesn't come as easily to these people. Usually quite affable, they enjoy the light side of life. This tendency to take things lightly makes them quite pleasing to be around, but it can be maddening to people seeking support on the deeper issues in life. They're both interesting and interested. Their wit can be dazzling and their changeability dizzying. At the very least, they will seldom bore you.
So that's I, that's the I was sun. Just, I was sure it was me until you got to the part where it's like everything's light and easy, and that's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> everything's I, real I like fucking chill. I, there was a part that made me laugh early on when you were like, "This person is easily bored," and Drew was just like staring off as if. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when it said the part about wanting to gather information and share it, I was like, that is Drew to yeah. a T. Like, I've gotten so many, like, off the wall informatives from Drew at all hours. Yeah, it's like, have you seen too. this thing? Yeah. It's like Drew is the mailroom of interesting things. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, this will, this will go to Gus. This will go to Gavin. <laughs> it's awesome. All right. So let's read the moon sign part. All right. Okay. I got a burp, though. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Nice. Depending on other positions in the chart, uh, these people are not necessarily outgoing. When they feel comfortable, they do like being the center of attention. That is, they like being in the spotlight in the comfort of their own homes and with family and friends. They enjoy entertaining others and often take on the role of comic. Uh, they often feel a need to organize and even control their families and friends. They have an inner mission to set things right and generally like to oversee the goings on in their inner circle. This is a rather creative position of the moon. At the very least, these people want to create and entertain. They can be rather lazy at times and a little bossy too. Generally though, they have a deep need to treat others fairly and justly. Uh, they require lots and lots of love and care in order to function well in the world. <clears throat> these people are far too concerned about their image to make splashy scenes outside the comfort of their own homes. In public, they prefer to take things in dignified ways. At home, however, they're given to they're given to big displays of emotional drama. These scenes generally don't last too long, however. They are often personally popular folk who are valued for their integrity and strong sense of justice. Generally, it is easy to reason with these people. Appealing to their well-developed sense of fairness usually works well. That one also sounds like that's that one's on I'm gonna take that one. The third one's me for sure, and the second one's guy. <laughs> Those are too close. But if they're backwards, then I don't know who the fuck. Yeah, I, I feel like I, I can definitely relate to more stuff in the second two than the first one. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna stick with our in my our initial gut, and uh, the second one for Gav and that last one for Drew. So the person I just read is Gavin Free. Uh, okay. So yeah. So oh, Gavin, a lot of that a lot of that doesn't. I just don't identify. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing with <laughs> astrology, right? Is it like you you look into reading it about yourself and that's, I think, yeah. what people find uh, a bunch of bahoozy about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think Drew got the best one there. I did get the best one. The middle one? Yeah, that one was great. Very complimentary. Did, yeah. I wouldn't necessarily <laughs> agree with almost any of it, but hey, look at me go. Is that why you said you wished it was you, that you were hoping it was you, Gav? Yeah. <laughs> that second one was great. There was no... Yeah. See, I always think of Gavin as someone who who collects information and likes to share it because he always has these like fun facts and he's always full of like this random information. I guess because we do the podcast together all the time. Yeah. But I I do I do get like Gavin was saying, Drew's almost like the mail room of interesting articles and fact just, toys. If, like, I get... like if people get onto my list, there's like a brain list that I have. And if you get onto my <laughs> list, I'm like, oh oh, you know who'd love that? That guy would. And it's like I just send it out and it. It only lasts, usually, if you're lucky, it only lasts like three months. I guess, Gus, you've crossed, both of you have crossed the threshold now. Yeah. You're both hosed. We until did it. Until I'm All dead. I've learned from that is that I should be more like Drew, I think. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> try, try and be more like Drew. Or that people think you are like Drew yeah. already. Uh, like you said me. Yeah. This episode of the Received Podcast is brought to you by Honey. Uh, it's the future, baby, which means that most of us these days, it feels like online shopping is the only shopping we really do. I can relate to that. As for today's sponsor, Honey comes in. It's the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you're checking out. Honey's basically your online shopping imaginary friend who saves you money. So, you know, pretty useful. Uh, here's how it works. You get Honey on your computer for free in two easy clicks. Then when you're checking out on over uh, one of its over 30,000 supported sites, Honey pops up. All you do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons for that site. And if Honey finds a working code, it applies the best one to your cart. 
It's so easy. It's so quick. You'd be surprised. It pops up on all kinds of st sites that I buy stuff from. Uh, if you do e-commerce stuff like Amazon, uh, if you do Target, uh, you know, you whatever you need in for uh, an actual brick and mortar store, it really has just about everything covered. Uh, it couldn't be easier. It just sits there in your browser and you, like I said, you just click apply coupons. It automatically finds all the best ones for you uh, and it saves money instantly. Uh, you can save too because Honey has found it's over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. Honey supports all kinds of retailers from tech and gaming sites to fashion brands, even food delivery. It's simple. If you have a computer, Honey should be on it. It's free. works with whatever browser you use. You get Honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash rooster. That's joinhoney.com slash rooster so they know that we sent you. Thanks, Honey, for supporting today's episode. Drew, speaking of uh, Drew's uh, email list or Slack list, he sent me a fucking creepy video a couple months ago <laughs> i don't that, remember uh, what it was that uh uh um it was about the retiming video this oh, meeting never happened yeah i sent that one to gab too gab also has that one usually when there's and, science and video shit it goes right to you guys science yeah, and videos and it, where you that's how that that's how that mail gets categorized and it just video. like it just scares me like it's like deep fakes on another level where you can remove any trace of someone being in a video or you can retime video to make it look like things happened in a way where they didn't happen. Uh, and the, the, the quick example from uh, that one of the ones that they use in that video was like showing a bunch of people jumping on trampolines all in a big room and everyone's jumping at different paces, but the algorithm retimes it. So it looks like everyone's jumping on the trampoline up and down, all synchronized at the same time. Whoa. Sounds like uh, what George Lucas did in the prequels. Yeah. Move, yeah, it's Han shot first, but in real life for everyday application. Yeah, it's a uh, it's creepy, creepy stuff. I think it's creepy because it's AI, right? Like you could do that by hand, always. right? And the algo but... is just like looking at it and taking it apart for you, and then putting it back yeah. together. Yeah, the like, fact Look. that someone's built the tools to be like, hey, just make it like this, and it just does it. That's so weird. Anytime, yeah, anytime a computer fucks with a human likeness, I get really weirded out. Or it's like, hey, <laughs> we took that person's face and made it, put it in a computer, and now it's on this person's face. What do you think of that? I'm like, I don't want that no, at all. I don't like it. Please take hey, that robot we, away. Before we get too far away from it, can you send me the one about me, uh, the, like the full one to me via email, Barbara? Yes, um, I'll send the you the... You so I'll, I'll send you the, the Google Doc that I have this in, but if you go to, uh, I'll give you the website and you could put in your information and it'll just like uh, essentially cool. fill it all out. It's not one of those things you could like save as a, a web page, unfortunately. Ah. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious to read some more about it. Gus, I bought a movie. You bought a movie? I bought a movie. Oh, is, have you seen oh, it? Oh, nice. Yeah, I've seen it. I just oh, okay. wanted it. I'm going to watch it I again. I, someone tweeted to me the other day and i sent it to gavin someone tweeted to me a uh like a set photo from that movie uh we're we're past the point where you talk about spoilers for that movie we've probably spoiled that movie on this podcast before right I'm sure that you have there's no way that you haven't <laughs> it's a it's it's a set photo from the final scene where uh someone's been stabbed someone has cake on their face and you know they're all just like on set you know like laughing and smiling like hugging each other <laughs> weird to see that like out of context, knowing how that movie ends and just seeing right. everyone like just Everyone's being calm and chill. Like, yeah, they're on set. They're like, they're, they're, we're making a movie. Uh, it's a great film. Oh, speaking of movies, is this the podcast where we can finally talk about Tenet? Is that allowed? I haven't how long seen has it, it been yet. out. <gasps> I guess not. <laughs> you can talk about it. That's the, I, yeah, whatever. Talk about it. I don't care. We'll talk about it. Spoil we'll, it. We'll save I, it. We'll, I, we'll, I, we'll, ah, fine. We'll save it. We'll save it. I don't even know if I could spoil. I've seen it three times and I still am figuring it out. Stuff's like backwards and shit. <laughs> but it's like oh. intentionally <laughs> is it it's intentionally vague. Like Memento only almost makes sense. But is Tenet just like vague? I feel like for Memento, sake of being vague? Memento definitely makes sense because you can physically You can re-piece it if you wanted it. to. You can like cut it into a linear Right. Progression, if you want. Can't really entirely do that with Tenet. Yeah. I, because Tenet... there's stuff happening at the same time that's only shown once. Yeah. It's, I don't, I don't yeah. think it's... Uh, I think Memento's a lot easier to grasp oh, than this movie Oh, for sure. Because okay. yeah. Memento's like confusion, payoff, confusion, payoff, and it's right. just because it's all cut that way. They're, they're, like, they 
in Tenet, they do stuff just to show off. They maybe like I had to pause the movie sometimes and be like, wait, how does that work? Or what's happening here? Uh, like during the climactic battle when the building is blown up twice, and you're like, <laughs> what just yeah. happened? Like how did the, I? How did that work? In the movie, I immediately I was like. And I looked down, I was like, right, at what point was that building completely upright? Like, when was that built? <laughs> How was it left? How was it built? Right. right. <laughs> like, did it exist in real time for like two seconds? Like, they just finished building, like, ah, we're all done with that building. <laughs> yeah. And then it gets... <laughs> That, that that was the turning point for me when I was just like, wow, okay, it's gone, it's gone beyond my comprehension. My goodness. That that movie does the thing where it like it doesn't make sense for a long time, and then uh, like I was reaching a point where it's like I'm gonna check out of this movie if I don't understand it soon. And then right when I was thinking, I was like, oh wait, wait, this is it. This is the scene where they're gonna explain what the fuck is going on. <clears throat> like they, they, I felt like that when they start showing you what's going on is like they timed that perfectly because I was like, I am so lost, and if I don't figure out what's going on in the next two minutes, I am totally out. You just saw it once. Well, but then that's when they start explaining it. And you're like, okay, I can start wrapping my head around what it is that I'm seeing here. And then you can start trying to think about it. Because up until that point, you're like, I I have no idea what's happening. Have you guys seen Soul, the new uh, Disney Pixar movie? No, not yet. I did see that one. It was good, but it made me sad. But it was good. That's what I'm like, afraid of. I don't like thinking about dying. I don't like thinking about being in space and dying and shit. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Is that yeah, but I mean the... the <laughs> yeah, it's why, I hate, it's why I hate the moon, Gavin. Because everybody, it's when you there. die, a little known fact, when you die, you go to the moon. As more people die, the moon gets bigger because it the moon heavier. is bones. Right. Of, of people <laughs> the died. moon is bones. Moon is bones. It, it's funny that you say that, Drew, because like I'm in the same boat as, as you, like dying. I constantly think about it. I'm constantly terrified Every of it. Day. Yeah. Like I hear about someone who died of something and I'm like, okay, well, now I'm terrified to be alive constantly because mm -hmm. what if I die unexpectedly? But um, this movie had the opposite effect on me. It made me more like grateful for life. Hmm. Oh no, I just went right into the death hole. I went to the death hole in like the first <laughs> the five minutes hole. and I couldn't get out. Hey, did you just kind of hang out down there? You're like, wonder if hell's real. And it's like, oh, I wonder if, I ever, if I'll ever actually meet the devil. And then you're like, well, now I'm stuck down here. Great. Now I'm just going to be thinking about the afterlife for the next hour and a half. And then by the time I started to pay attention again, the movie was over. <laughs> I, oh, I feel man. like I stopped wondering what death was going to be like when... I just remember what it was like before I was born, and I assume it's going to be very similar, sure. almost exactly to that, <laughs> where there was nothingness. The, right. The the weirdest part of that to me is there are several years where you existed, but you don't remember them. Like, yeah, you were born, and there's five years, four or five years, where you don't know anything that happened, and I've then got, it's like your 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 brain starts working. I've got like memories from when I was two. So I've, I, my window was short, I guess, mm. of the non-memory making. There's apparently a very few number of people in the world who uh, remember every day of their life. It's like a very, very small amount of how, people. How do you but prove that, though? How do you most prove of the, that someone remembers everything? They, I mean, yes, like, oh, like, January 6, 1985. Like, oh, yeah, well, I, I went here and I saw this person and I was wearing this shirt and blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, you just I give them a random day. And, I thought yeah. you were saying, like, day one, I came out of the womb and... Uh, oh. <laughs> there's a very, sucked, very sucked small... Milk up. There's a very, very small percentage of people who can actually do that day by day. Most of those people they've found are avid journalers. So they'll journal yeah. and then re-reference their journal. And then that's how they remember. They're actually not remembering the actual memory. They're remembering the journal entry, which is What's a whole is, different thing. I was going to... I was going to say that it reminds me of uh, that episode of How To, where he talks about how he writes everything down that happens. Yeah, that was the saddest. Him. Aside from the last episode, that episode where they show his journal, I was just like, this is the saddest man I've ever met in my whole life. <laughs> just because he's got this journal and every, it's every day laid out. And there's just the tiniest print of everything he does. So I was like, he meticulously documents the whole city. But that's so probably like, really interesting for him, though, to reference that. Oh, incredible. He said he was going back through it. I was just like, like why is that sad, though? It just looked, the way it's written is real sad. It's real scrawly and sad. I just got sad from it. I was like, this poor guy spends a lot of his day <laughs> writing real tiny boxes. Man, that's a bummer. That is a very sad existence. But it seems I like a happy dude, though. It, it would be useful, right? Like, if you were curious, how many hamburgers did I eat last year? Let me reference the journal. And you'd be like, oh, I ate 40 hamburgers. 
Maybe I'll eat 41 this year. I feel like it is sad how much memory vanishes and blurs together to the point where you can compress a year down to like a couple of things that you remember about it. Like if, if I said to you, it's what true. did you do in uh, September of 2017? Do you, would you have any idea? Sure. Not a no, single, not a single thing that I would remember. I honestly, like if you said, what did you have for dinner one night last week? I wouldn't be able to tell you. Well, yeah, I think the, it's, I wish I could, maybe every day is extreme like journaling, but I wish I had like a compressed summary of every month, like what happened that month, what I did. I feel like <laughs> yeah, look, I look back through my camera uh, reel on my phone if I want to remember stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, look at my similarly, Instagram stories. <laughs> similarly, when I was freelance, project-based stuff made everything a lot easier to remember things. Like I know that I got my dog the month after I, I got finished with a big job. And I remember that job very well. It was like a moment. I remember getting the dog in like the early days of the dog. So it's like those project based things are very helpful. Like you said, September 2017, uh, we just finished Bloodfest. That's how I know what we were doing. Like I can remember days after that show had finished. So I think that's a really helpful thing yeah. in, in time is just having benchmarks uh, of things that you're yeah. doing. I'm okay with placing stuff either before or after like a big event in my life, but that's about as far as it goes in terms of memory. I'm just like, yeah. oh, that was before that happened or that was after that happened sort of the stuff yeah same i guess maybe but i guess you don't journal right gap no or like take a lot of pictures though yeah i wonder if it just like help like helps you be a person who's better at remembering things by journaling like not necessarily it referencing it but... yeah when you journal it you, it has to like filter through you and you have to process it with a picture you just blindly go like Flit, and then you can forget that you even took it like you it didn't didn't go through you in the same way as like you're summarizing it yourself by writing. Right. I feel. Interesting. Huh. <laughs> this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Felix Gray. I constantly have my face in a screen from morning to night. There's no cutting back. I got my phone, my TV, I'm constantly in front of one of these monitors right here, whether it's working or gaming. But with every screen comes another source that emits blue light. What's blue light? Well, it's the light that's emitted by digital screens at a certain point of the spectrum. It's about 455 nanometers. Write that down. It's going to be on the test. Uh, if you're like me and you endure excessive amounts of screen time from your favorite devices, you may have eye strain, headaches, or tired eyes. And blue light at night can even lower the production of melatonin, which is the hormone that regulates your sleep. The solution to this is Felix Grey. Felix Grey blue light filtering glasses filters out 90% of blue light in the most damaging range and eliminates 99% of glare through a proprietary industry-leading lens technology only available to Felix Grey. Uh, and it's not only that, Felix Grey glasses are stylish and have a ton of options for you to choose from. Uh, our eyes were not meant to look at screens all day. It messes with our internal balance, which affects our sleep, causes stress, headaches, blurry vision, eye fatigue. So ordering online is super easy. The glasses ship directly to you with a hard case and lens cloth included. You can try them for 30 days risk-free. If your screens aren't easier on the eyes, you send them back for a full refund. Finally, a pair of glasses designed for the 21st century. Go to felixgrayglasses.com slash rooster to shop glasses that work as hard as you do. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash rooster. Free shipping, free exchanges, 30-day money-back guarantee. felixgrayglasses.com slash rooster. We're, we're getting into like a deep existential, Super existential rabbit crisis. hole about like uh, what yeah. is memory we can, what is <laughs> what is an experience we can we can but, uh to, to get to dig us out we can play that game i brought the little guessing game about the cookbook <laughs> you love guessing <gasps> so uh drew bro you, you set it up drew why am i setting okay, it up fine. for you uh i was watching also go watch soul goodbye <laughs> yeah go watch soul uh i was watching maddie matheson this week and he showcased a cookbook on his show and if you don't know who maddie matheson is he's a great internet celebrity chef uh and makes good food and he's just loud it's like if michael jones cooked it was great um <laughs> but he was he like mentioned this cookbook on his show and i was like wait what and so i sent it to gus and i was like can i talk about this on the podcast and he was like i guess if we have to i was like great okay cool so i'm going to show you the picture of this cookbook uh, er actually eric's going to throw it up in the g chat um yeah there it is uh tell me what this cookbook what like what is some of the some key ingredients of this cookbook <laughs> gravy sure kind of gavin so what am i doing i'm saying an ingredient what what, what kind of cookbook is this natural yeah. harvest uh, go to go to gus <laughs> oh I, I already saw it he sent it to me and yeah. uh i, 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 I know to, what the i had to approve is. it yeah. sugar Eric, go ahead and reveal. 
So gravy then, was pretty close. Yeah, gravy, sugar, sugar gravy is real close. Uh, yeah. The uh, the Amazon page for this fucking book is like <laughs> something out of a nightmare. It's a treat. It's a delight, and it's weird as shit. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah, found that this week and was like, I need to bring this to the podcast. Maybe it's a talking point. Um, there were, there were a shocking number of related items to this cookbook. Tons. And then also there were like, oh, let me find it. The, uh, the back of the cookbook is, is exquisite. The only review that I found of the cookbook was also exquisite. Um, this uh, recipe book is very practical. It saves on tissues and allows me to use all of my natural oh, harvest no, and put no. it to good use. Whereas otherwise, it would get wasted. <laughs> Review on Lulu.com. <laughs> nope. We don't need that. Is semen technically a waste product? I mean, waste. I would just... I like no, cooking because... With bod- like, cooking with bodily fluids, you, period. Like, don't. Like, don't do that. It's not a waste because your body doesn't need to excrete it. Like... It doesn't build up. It's not toxic inside of you, right? Well, like other waste, up. but other waste you have to expel because it would. I would argue the same up. for a for a nocturnal you... jizz. Yeah, don't you have to expel semen to keep I mean, your balls I... healthy and stuff like that from time to time? I mean, I, I say that, but you don't need to. <laughs> you won't die. You won't I die. guess it's good. For, it's good for your prostate, right? I, I guess. The other I, I don't think is... you could go a year without doing it by accident. I went. Many years. Uh, when I, Not even masturbating. Well, I guess I guess that's true. I, I all, all little all teenage boys are masturbating fiends. Let me reference right. your astrology chart real fast to see see what in regards to its natural. What's the <laughs> what's my natural harvest on the uh, astrology uh, chart? <laughs> I have a tendency to avoid harsh realities, but uh, they like to wallow in their own self pity. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> anyway, so if you guys want the book, I can I'll send you a copy. I'll I'll send everybody a copy at the end of the show. Um, I, Please, I'm good. yeah. I wanted to get more into cooking this year. Do they recommend that you uh, go you <laughs> make your specimen before you start cooking, or do you I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. Like, wh- like at what point ball. in the procedure are yeah? Do you just <laughs> pull a natural harvest I, <laughs> mid I, mid cook? I need to make a mental note to never eat at Drew's house. <laughs> well, you know, like... I'm just saying this is a bad... I'm saying it's a bad idea. Don't put bodily fluids in your food. Well, you know, with some recipes, like, you're supposed to, like, mix something as you're pouring in an ingredient. So, like, maybe this is the thing where, like, you're mixing it, and then you gotta, like, slowly... <laughs> you gotta whip up a batch. Slowly you gotta get the ingredient the in. <laughs> I mean, I assume you're using bodily fluids from other creatures, Drew. I just your, milk. Your I milk. Mean, like, and then the eggs, meat. eggs I guess. But like human, I guess, is it cannibalism to use a natural harvest to cook with? I feel like that's a level oh. of cannibalism, is it not? No, you're not eating the person. I mean, that's you're a philosophical eating. discussion. <laughs> you're eating half a person. Right. Genetic code. Yeah. Um, you're also, the millions that, of half babies. The other thing that really bothered me about the cover of that cookbook was why would you use a flan? Why a flan? Right. It's the most disgusting thing you could have put well, you on know the what front it, of that it fucking It looked like cover. a bunch of penny noodles just... with gravy inside. <laughs> oh, I never saw that until you said that, Barbara. Oh. Like, that's that's why I was like, I was going to say noodles, but that didn't seem very exciting. So that's why I said gravy, because it looked oh. like a combination of the two. Also, why is the author's middle name in No, that's a, that's, a, that's what he goes by. That's his go-by name, right? Okay. Is that like a foreign word for something? I have no idea, but like that's just his that's his thing. This is and see, this is the uh, this is something that got left on the mailroom floor in my brain. I was like, I can't send this to anyone. I'm just gonna have to tell the entire internet about it. I know. I'll take it to the podcast and tell everyone. <laughs> that's right. So everybody knows now. Yeah. you're you're one of us. Pick it up at any Amazon dealer. <laughs> any Amazon dealer. God, uh, how do you find these things? I love it. <laughs> Uh, who is this? Um, who, that's a good username. Junior Amazon says it's the, uh, talking about the flan. It's the cummiest looking item. Right. Mm. Yuck. Uh, you don't nah, have to keep showing it, Eric. It's there's fine. There's things in that. I want to see some wrong. pages. It's the back, very apparently, the, the back cover is very fun. Like the writing on the back cover is very good as well. Again, 
take the time go to amazon.com check it out buy a couple copies i get a dollar every time somebody buys one Guess you keep telling me I don't have to show it. I'm choosing to show it. I want you to look at the cum flan. I want you to see it. Look at the cum flan. Look, and then here I am, and you can look at me, and now look at the cum flan. It's right there. Why do you want that association, Eric? I don't want the association. Your brain is making the connection, Gavin. I'm I'm simply Now I want the uh, Eric cum flan t-shirt. This is hypnosis, Eric. You You need my consent. Before you hypnotize me, I think. Oh no! I got I I, Eric Badur was removed from the meeting. <laughs> Let's see what I have to look at now, motherfucker. <laughs> All right. Oh, he's back. Don't <laughs> ever kick me again. There will uh, there, I just there don't get it. will be hell to pay. Who do you think you are? This is uncouth. This will be the last time. Do you understand? Look at this face. The face of vengeance. This will not stand. This, All this of smallest the face of vengeance. Podcast A very little face of ge- vengeance. Can you ban his IP? listeners, rise up and join me. No more. Uh, no. No. No more censorship just... over cummy flan. <sighs> okay. That's enough of that. <laughs> ingredients in the world though semen like it doesn't doesn't do anything have a flavor use an egg you know use i just don't egg. get like it'd be one thing if it had a very distinct flavor and it's like okay these recipes call for this flavor that you need in it but it's just like gooey nothingness say no to semen use an egg, <laughs> use an egg. <laughs> correct protein substitute uh, oh Ugh. i have uh. a new um a new complaint about cyberpunk that I've thought about, Gus. What's that? Um, there's a monopoly on doors in that game. Every door is the same. Are they're they? All, they're all made by the same company who just made this one door and everyone bought this door. You go to like super low income areas, people living in trailers, but they always have the very shiny, very high tech automatic sliding door. Immersion hmm. breaking, except for the big never, doors; those are different. I never noticed that. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have to go back and look again sometime. Eventually, <laughs> once the game's fixed, and I can play it, and I decide to boot it up again. That's uh. <laughs> I'm, are you, are you close to, to be? Are you gonna be done soon? Uh, I'm still like, I think I'm like sixty percent on the first percentage. Hmm. Getting through. That's it. the one. That's the one I finished. It was that one on the far left? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was the one. I like we'll how see. you're saying this as if doors generally look different from each other. They do. How many different types of door? There's only like four types of door. There's like four like, doors. Well, I mean, no, yeah, no. you got a plain one. You got one with like the little square indents in it, and you got one that maybe has like a rounded indent in it, and then yeah, you, got you got a got glass like, one. You got like your wooden doors. Yeah, I've got. Open I like think this. In- you got your sliding doors. You got like a pocket door. I think you've got like my a house, business have- door that's like glass with one of those closes on it there's all doors it's, everywhere in my in my house i have five different kinds of doors wow Barbara. how do you feel about that mm. i feel like gus is humble bragging right now about come with me let me take you on a i got tour. i got, got a no front course, door so i can take you on a back tour door of my, uh, and of my doors uh, doors <laughs> in, in her doors <laughs> like the doors at work they're different are you saying that they all look exactly the same? Like every door in this game looks exact. Maybe that's maybe it's part I'm of the DLC sure. coming out. I'm that's what sure it is. Every it's... door is a futuristic metal sliding door with a light on it that's red if you can open it and green if you red if you can't. <laughs> yeah, I would assume you red if you can't, can. green if you can. But <laughs> so that, that's what that's all all they have in Cyberpunk is those types of doors. Unless it's like a double door or like a thing you have to lift. Pretty much every door to every building you go in is the same. So you're telling me there's at least three doors? Yeah. Yeah, but that's not many doors for a whole city, Drew. How many different doors are in Austin? Let me ask you that. At least three. (laughs) We need a door census. Barbara, what were you going to say? Um, I was just confused as to like playing that game. That's something that Gavin noticed again, finding information and dispelling that information, little bits and pieces little to bit, people. Little bits. Yeah, man, you're such, you're such a, a, a sun in Gemini moon in Leo, Gavin, <laughs> my God. 
<laughs> I think well, if I had to guess, I would say what probably drew his attention was the light. What do you mean? The light on the door that's red or green? Is oh, that yeah. what so, attracted your attention, Gavin? I think it's just because this like trailer park had him. And I was like... Oh, sure. How would well, it's the future. Kinda... Maybe they found the perfect door for every everything, every purpose, and they're like, let's just stick to this door. It's cheap. We got it. We got a monopoly on doors, and that's it. Maybe there, like, Maybe in the future like... there's a door war, and they're the victors, <laughs> and then that's what everybody owns. And so that'll be like or... DLC. There'll be like a prequel to Cyberpunk called like Cyberpunk, the war for doors. And you'll have all sorts of doors, <laughs> and then eventually it'll just turn into all the same door by the end. Oh, CD Projekt like Red, you can hire me to be a story producer. I'm down. I'll come through. <laughs> or society as a whole has decided to move on. It's like, we've got doors settled. That's it. We don't have to worry about them anymore. <laughs> Let's focus on everything else. How many, like, just guess off the top of your head, how many different types of doors do you think there are in the world? Like, if you had a just a shot in the dark. I mean, someone brought it up in chat, but like even playing The Sims, there's already like 75 different types of doors or something like that. So uh, realistically well, in the world, yeah. probably, I would say I, like I, hundreds of thousands. I'd say millions. You got a lot of people probably making their own doors. Yeah, custom you doors, got, I guess also, you got. Where do you draw the line? Is a gate a door? Is a saloon <laughs> door a door? It's a saloon what? A saloon door. A door. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, look yeah. at that. But what about, the, what about the little pushy boys? The little, uh, p -p 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 you know, like you walk in yeah, with the, the cowboy hat. What are those? Yeah. Ba -da 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 -da. Are they, is it a door or is it flaps? Yeah, what is that? What is that door even called? <laughs> a salute, the saloon flaps. I'm going to cruise on down. I got to buy me some saloon flaps. Yeah, like what, what constitutes a door? Like, is it something that could be closed the, completely? And... It's a wall that moves. A wall that moves. A wall that moves. So well, would you call a gate for like a, a gate so then a gate's for like a, a pet? Is there a well, height to it? Like what if it's when, like one of those little stair gates? Well, when a door is closed, you want it to act exactly like a wall. No, I well, don't. I have, right? a, I have a no, question because... for you, Gev. When is a door not a door? Mm, I know the answer to this dumb joke. When it's a jar. Uh... <laughs> I knew I added that sound effect to my mixer for a reason. <laughs> we did it. We finally found it. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, continue your, this conversation because I am I'm genuinely curious what well, you I think, think the doors. conversation ended right, right as soon as I started it. But that's because you, you think you're right. Uh, no, I, but see, <laughs> the, the conversation ended as soon as it started because I'm right. It uh, just wasn't worth a conversation, is what I'm getting. Hmm. Mm, I think we. I feel like we've uh, experienced some real philosophical uh, rabbit rabbit trails in, on this episode. I think. Well, I think we we need a, a graphic for next week. Uh, door or wall? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see what? it. Though. Look, if every car was the same in Cyberpunk, Gus, would you notice? If every car was oh, identical, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Because you interact with cars all the time. They're in the street. You drive some of them. Doors, I'd say you interact with just as much. You, or you're always going right up to them too, looking real close. You're going, yeah, but going you, through you, places. Yeah, you spend lots of times in the car. You just kind of pass through the door. It's like you don't even think about it. Fair. This exact meeting happened at CD Projekt Red like six years ago. They were just like, "No, <laughs> we're sticking with one fucking door." And somebody's like, "Well, I think somebody's gonna have a problem." It's like, "No, we're doing no it." No one's gonna one notice door. the doors. It's the doors. Who's gonna fucking notice? Cut to. Oh, yeah, we Barbara. know about the doors. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to point out in chat, PJD six 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 says, "I adored that joke." Hey. I have a, a another joke that I want to tell on the podcast that I heard over the weekend that I liked a lot. Yeah. Oh, so uh, it's not just me? You were frozen for a sec, Gus. Oh, okay. Yeah. My, I don't know what the fuck's going on over here. Uh, maybe your internet just paused itself. <laughs> yeah. Great. Awesome. Uh, yeah. What, after my power went out yesterday, it took so long for everything to come back up the way it was supposed to. Like my room, my lights were still set to fuck room setting, apparently. <laughs> uh, it's like just trying to get like the internet working again. It's like, no, this thing needs to reboot before that thing. Like just like this cascading. 
level of things that need to be straightened out. And I might still be dealing with some of that shit. That might be what. Gus, are, are you taking up. pleasure in suffering and your self pity? <laughs> <laughs> He's recharging. He'll come back stronger than ever. <laughs> oh no, no, it's true. It's happening. <laughs> Not like this. Yeah. Or do you feel like you're gonna come back stronger after you've wallowed in self pity for a little bit on this? Are your lights gonna be somehow better? <laughs> oh Man. God. Oh, I'm never going to let you love that one down. <laughs> fucking got me. Um, uh, well, I'll tell you my joke because it made me laugh, and I think you guys will get some some pleasure out of it. Um, okay. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? A what? carrot. It's... Uh. <laughs> I was I was literally halfway through saying, well, it's not carrot because that's not funny. <laughs> um, but it is carrot. <sighs> it's just like when you're not expecting it because i was just wa i was watching a video where someone made that joke i like i spit my drink out everywhere because it's just like the most in plain sight joke you could possibly <laughs> make <laughs> uh. but usually the in plain sight ones that are funny they're not the ones your brain immediately jumps to right but i was what? just heard carrot yeah <laughs> you're too smart for the joke gavin uh I saw an awful story the other day. Speaking of uh, Drew's little, uh, uh, little news tidbits, your, your, little, your little nuggets. There was, uh, I read about a town, I think it was in the UK. Uh, yeah. That Woo! is, is there, they have a serious problem where the town is being overrun with radioactive seagulls. Uh, <laughs> Go on. I guess that there's this uh, nuclear power plant in Sellafield, and uh, there's a they have a real problem with uh, birds that come by and land like come by through hazardous radiation and then try to move on. Like the radi they they become radiated and then right. they would leave. So they've hired people to shoot birds around the power plant. So whenever birds come by, they shoot them. Uh, but they don't know how to dispose of the birds because they're now irradiated. So they they have a giant freezer filled with radioactive birds, and it's oh getting to the God. point where it's really full, and there's no way to <laughs> transport them what? or dispose of them. So they have they're just being they just have tons of radioactive seagulls that they don't know how to get rid of. Launch them into space. Launch those birds into space. They're, I feel they're like designated. They're designated as low-level nuclear waste. Whenever you see, like, the, you know, the signs that they have to make sure can be read in every language by any generation of human for decades to come. Right. And there's, right. like, buried nuclear waste. I can't imagine seeing one of those signs and digging it up, and it's just birds. Just seagulls. Just a bunch of buried birds. Oh, my God. Beyond here, there be gulls. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have to bury it, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, they, they said that there's a, a disposal place that they can take it to a few miles away, but because the 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 it's like organic matter, it's like this whole other thing they have to worry about, like other animals coming and eating them, or how they're going to decay and what happens to that radiation. It's couldn't, like this whole you, other fuck. Couldn't you pressurize? Thing they have to deal with. Couldn't you pressurize all the like make a big pot of like pressurized seagulls and then use that as your like as a power like power. Is like uh <laughs> like then you're just running like you just renew the circle of uranium with uh radiated well, what's irradiated the half life seagulls? of a seagull <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't what know is I the half like... life of an irradiated seagull <laughs> i feel like if you bury him the decomposition will release a ton of gas which will be an issue for whatever they're contained in right can we go back like... to cum flan <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we feed the cum flans to the irradiated seagulls and they'll cancel each other out, maybe? Neutralize. Oh my god. Yeah. So, yeah, that's quite the problem. That's the, definitely the beginning of a movie. Well, someone in chat said to get the guy from Tenet to take care of it. Mm. Very good. So, um, like, so take like, them uh, to a turnstile and they'd eventually... Khaki and Khaki in chat said, is this a Simpsons episode? <laughs> it should be. Deeper. <laughs> so make a great Simpsons episode. You've heard about that that uh the bird that like basically allegedly saved our universe. But I've told this story on this podcast before, right? Where like Have the you? bird I think so. There was a bird, I think it was over the Large Hadron Collider, and it dropped a piece of bread into the right spot and it like made the Hadron Collider 
not function when they were going to fire it up to do this big, big test. And these two dudes made a paper about like, had that bird not done that and they ran the test, it could have ripped a hole in our universe. And so the only reason our universe still subsists is because of this bird dropping can that a piece thing of bread. actually that's, rip a hole for long enough? I don't that, know. It was just the article. Man, I don't know. That's, that's some pro-bird propaganda if I know, I've right? ever heard it. <laughs> I feel like those <laughs> birds and the irradiated birds might be might be like cousins. The other day, I saw a hawk ripping apart a pigeon in my backyard. Like that's fucking metal. It, it was going to town eating that pigeon. I'll be honest. What you could invite David Attenborough to your house, and he could make an eight-part <laughs> series just from looking out your window. Yeah, yeah. just in your backyard. The stuff you see. Yeah, it was like it was big. Like at first, I couldn't tell what was going on because the hawk was standing on the pigeon and it was like putting its beak down and it would like, you know, stand up. Uh, right, exactly, like that kind of motion. So because it was like it was putting its beak into the pigeon and then like standing up to rip flesh out from it. Right. I was like, "What's that bird doing? Oh, it's eating another smaller bird." <laughs> ah, bro. Yeah, it was eating another smaller bird. It's a. Uh... How, how many snake encounters have happened at your house at this point? Because I've no heard snakes. of raccoons and possums I'm, and all sorts of other shit. I, I have my eyes out for snakes. I'm worried that uh, there's going to be snake encounters uh, with my dogs. Uh, so I'm. Mm. Uh, any yeah. ar- so any I'm, uh, any armadillos? I have not seen any. Um, I wish I, I I haven't seen an armadillo in Austin for years. Oh, I see them every uh, three days. Live live ones? Yeah, yeah. Oh, like wow. The trail, the little trail that I ride my bike on. Go, like we ride it at night and they're always out digging around hmm. every three days at least every three days armadillo do you smell them with your good sense of smell drew <laughs> yes i smell them with my good sense of smell <laughs> at I'm that point keep... the good sense of smell thing i was like has to be gavin there's been too many nose jokes on gavin that we can't <laughs> it has to be gavin i purposely left that in to throw you guys Ugh. for a loop <laughs> yeah it worked there's the, the red herring the red nose Exactly. I so speaking of like animals doing things like that when they're like ripping apart prey like that, something that I didn't know until like a few years ago is when you give a dog a toy and it does this thing where it like whips its head around and like at first I thought I was like, oh, it's just playing with it or like trying to get it in a better position. It's trying to fucking kill it. Yeah. Like yeah. I didn't I didn't know that yeah, until you know, rabbits and chickens. And yeah, and like uh yeah i think it was something i saw where they were doing that with rabbits and i'm like oh fuck that's what they do with toys like yeah, the I, I was watching toys. Something on tv once of uh I think it was like a pest control show where there was like a barn infested with rats and instead of trapping yeah. it, they would just let a few dogs in there yeah they grab a rat and go and just like yeah. snap its neck to death immediately drop it and just get another one and just do it over and over again i guess when you got no hands you just need to use your neck to kill stuff that's right that's also why they like squeaky toys because the squeaks remind them of prey crying in their jaws yeah that's just like i don't know like like, i know it's an animal but it's still like dark to me (laughs) but that's also why some dogs were bred like uh terriers specifically like i think yorkshire terriers were intended to sleep in beds with people with children so that if rats came out in the middle of the night and like crawled into the bed the dog would kill them yeah we're like Shih Tzus. Shih Tzus lived in the sleeves of uh, Chinese emperors, right? Like yeah. that's, that was the whole thing. They were little attack dogs and they lived in the big sleeves and would jump out. Oh, man. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure any, I mean, anything that a pet does is based on like ancient wild instincts from their ancestors. Yeah, or, you know, or bred for a very specific purpose. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. and there's like dachshunds are that way so they can. They're long, so they can burrow into badger, uh, badger compounds. Dogs. Badger dogs, yeah, dogs yeah. Uh, Mushroom. And then if that's right, a, a lot of them, a lot of them will badger. roll. They do this like weird alligator roll thing. A lot of dachshunds do. And they'll what it is is when you grab a badger, they have a bunch of extra skin, and so you have to like tighten it up in order to pull them out. And so that's what they're doing when they roll around a bunch. It's fucked up. Dogs do weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> I want to know what. The, uh, yep. Have you ever seen a cat look at a bird and it goes, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, what? What is it doing? Like, they like move their jaw and like make a little noise. Yeah. 
I don't know if what it's them it? like practicing the, what they're gonna do when they get the bird to try and eat it. I don't know. It's like it's when you weird. see like a commercial for burgers on TV and you're like, oh, that looks good, and you start drooling like that's a cat <laughs> looking at a bird. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a commercial for got, a cat. <laughs> when I first got Smee, I noticed him doing that at stuff out the window, but he would also do it on one other occasion, and that's whenever I got an achievement and it would pop up. You know, what the old style would be like, bloop, bloop, and it pop up. He would make the same noise at my achievements. <laughs> Weird. Which is really strange. I'm not sure how they relate to each other at all. Oh, Eric wrote oh. something. What did you write, Eric? Why don't you just say it? I love this because I found it right when you said the achievement thing. Generally, cat chirping occurs when a cat is interested in or provoked by prey. Bird, squirrel, rodent, etc., for example. It's more of an excited sound and less of a sound used to hunt. So the cat heard you get an achievement and was excited and got for excited. you yeah. every was time awesome, it happened. Was awesome, Smee has always been so supportive of me. I love that cat. <laughs> I also, speaking of your cat, Gavin, I saw a video of your cat standing at like perfectly straight up. <laughs> what was it doing? <laughs> it was yes, I think it was weirded out by the snow, but I was just sat on my oh. couch and it was <laughs> in the corner of my eye, I was like, and he was just upright like a meerkat, just like looking around. <laughs> and he looks like an absolute alien. I don't know what he was doing. This is my newest cat. This was Q. I watched that video like I think five times. How many? How many of these? How many of these cats do you have now? Four. Four. Well, at what point? So you guys you become... are officially cat ladies, right? Yeah. You. What time mm -hmm. do you, you become a cat man? Four is it four uh, the limit. At, at three. Oh, at okay. Three, you, at three, you have too many cats. You're outnumbered. Yeah, two to one. Yep. All right. Well, uh, we need to go ahead and wrap this up. So uh, I want to thank everyone for watching, for listening to us talk about astrology and cookbooks and cats and everything else that we've been through this year. Doors, oh, this episode. Oh, semen. And snow. Uh, so thanks for watching. We will see you guys again next time. Bye. Bye.